Alhamdulillah, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rasulullah. Uh, we thank Allah tonight. We are back to our series on the top hadith narrator. So which camera are we looking at? I just saw this uh, three cameras, right? Okay, yeah. And we skipped this uh, last month. So this month we back, and this is a month before Ramadan. Inshallah, we'll. Uh, this gonna be hopefully it's gonna be the last one, uh, because uh, I'll explain to you because this uh, probably uh, this um, the collector the hadith narrator that we're going to talk today uh, it's gonna be very interesting. This is probably one of our favorite stories on in terms of uh, stories around uh, uh, this particular uh, sahaba Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu anhu. Right, without further ado, uh, let's move. So this is the series of the top narrators, um, the top hadith narrator. We have already uh, covered, uh, as you can see here, the uh, the top one, which is a five thousand three hundred seventy four. This is the first one we talk about. It was uh, none other the uh, Abu Huraira, Abu Huraira radiallahu and That this is the first time we talk about. We also cover Abdullah bin Umar, Anas bin Malik, and we didn't cover Aisha particularly because uh, our mother Aisha bin the bin Abu Bakar because we are, we cover her in the series of the mother of the believers and the last time we talk about Abdullah bin Abbas and this is also a quite unique uh, individual uh, sahaba as well is one of the closest relationship to our prophet uh, among others because he's the uh, he's a cousin of Rasulullah and not only that he's also the uh, the household members which is the ahlul bayt of uh, Rasulullah so Tonight we're gonna talk about Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu an, and this is gonna be a very very interesting story, and then I don't know probably next month or probably next month because it's gonna be Ramadan. Next month probably we will have we will have class a different classes, but they will not have this Friday class. We will back to the Friday class after the Ramadan inshallah. Uh, I'm also trying to find out um, any uh, sources and inter information in term in terms of the seven uh, narrator, which is Abu Said. Uh, Al Qudri, I have not been able to find a detail the story of the Sahaba for this particular, so I don't know. This probably is gonna be the last one that we're gonna talk about, and I don't know whether for the next uh, next time around uh, we probably have one uh, one last session where we talk probably probably summary of this uh, giant narrator, the hadith narrator. Uh, if you remember one of the uh, one of the verses in Quran in Nahnu Nazalna Zikra, wa Nalahu Lahafizun that we be the one who sent down zikra so some uh, other tafsirs means not only al quran but also the teaching of al quran the hikmah or the wisdom of the quran which is uh, come to our the prophet muhammad which is the sunnah rasulullah and that is also uh, sort of la hafizun which is is uh, is protected by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the teaching of this islam which is the main sources will be al quran and al hadith al sunnah and this are also protected by allah and this uh, seven people, uh, the the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is where all these uh, uh, these narrations of the the hadith or the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is actually captured. All right, uh, so let's uh, start. And before we start for this particular Sahaba Jabir bin Abdullah radiallahu we have let's talk about the the uh, the, the parent first because the the father, because it's quite unique and this is probably quite. Um, is sort of one of the uh, one of the uh, very interesting story, if not probably the one of this is what I like this story a lot as well because uh, the father uh, Abdullah bin Amr uh, is one of the companions as well. Uh, Rabi uh, he is from the Khazras from the uh, this is the the uh, uh, the the tribe of uh, Ansar, which is the Ansar people in Medina, and uh, from the Khazras, and then what is the Banu Salama? Banu Salama is the the tribe or the sub tribe who live near the uh, the masjid Qiblatain. So if you if you've been to Manida before or on your Hajj or Umrah trip, so you have to visit. So, so one of the things that people uh, do ziarah or do a visit is the the masjid of Qiblatain, the masjid of two um, uh, two Qibla, right? So there's a time when 
Rasulullah was instructed by Allah to change the Qibla and then because of that the Qibla changed and the Masjid was uh, once uh, one uh, this is a uh, uh, there's a story where people actually changed the the uh, the directions of the Qibla uh, when they are uh, in the middle of the praying so that Masjid is being put in the Qibla Tain so this is the uh, uh, the tribe of uh, Abdullah bin Amr which is the father of Jabir bin Abdullah so there was a hadith there was a story of the hadith where uh, people mentioned uh, there was a story where they, the people of Banu Salma will always try to walk to Masjid Nabawi, right? And that is probably because they're actually not really very near. So it's probably about, uh, if you Google it, well, or if you, you see, that's probably, if you probably walk, right, now, probably within 30 minutes or 45 minutes, right? So, of course, if you go there, uh, you, you will you will ride a bus or have a, a tour bus that, that take you from that. So it's going to be probably 10 to 15 minutes. But... Yeah, if you take a, if you walk this for for about forty five minutes, and you heard the story about uh, these people, uh, they always come to prayer and then they want to be close to the prophet. They want to be close to the masjid, so they uh, gather together and then they uh, they decide to sell the properties in uh, where they live, and then just probably sell the properties and everything, and they they try to move to the masjid number with the prophet mosque. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when knowing that, and the stop, then that says, you know what, your steps are being counted, so don't move, right? What it means is you get the blessing for all the steps that you do, right? So this is a, this is a blessing of, uh, even though you live far from the masjid, but then the effort that you do is, um, uh, they will be counted as as a blessing. Um, one of the interesting story about. Uh, this uh, uh, the father of uh, Jabir is he is actually involved in, uh, in uh, participated uh, in the pledges of Aqaba uh, and then exactly on at the time uh, people make Hajj but the Hajj is not uh, this is the the, the people uh, before I think around the uh, before the Hijrah of Rasulullah Sallam from Makkah to Medina uh, where uh, the p- prosecutions from uh, people of Makkah is getting stronger and stronger as Rasulullah well, tried to find any other tribes that will take them or any other tribe that will help them right so they come to when the the Hajj season of course at the time is not this uh, the Hajj that we the Rasulullah instruct us to do or give an example there was uh, there was the Hajj that people do because uh, there's uh, still generations from uh, the teaching of uh, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam of course they already changed the way they do that right so one of them is they do it uh, naked for example uh, they to make when when they make the tawaf and whatnot so uh, when the contingent from different parts of uh, from the uh, from the peninsula from the Arabian Peninsula when they come uh, and they do, to, to do the Hajj they make campings around uh, Aqaba so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam will come to every single tribes and ask you know you know, you know I am uh, tell them the prophet and so on. So at the time, the people from uh, the people from Medina, Medina, or at the time we call Yathrib, they came and they interested with that idea of uh, having Prophet Muhammad to go to Medina, and then uh, they have this pledge. So that was the first pledge, and then at the time uh, he embraced Islam, right? And there was actually two pledges. The second pledge, uh, this first pledge, is about twelve people, and then when they come back. To Medina, they told everyone, and then the Islam starts spreading. Uh, if you remember the story of uh, one of the companions called Musab uh, uh, bin Umair, uh, he came to Medina and then he gave da'wah and uh, have a discussions with them. So more and more people actually embraced Islam uh, in Medina at the time, uh, while people, uh, Prophet Muhammad and all the the, the companions are still struggling in Mecca and they got persecutions, they get uh, they get embargoed upon. Uh, if you remember that story, so, so they come again on the second pledge, and this time, Abdullah bin Amr being his son, right? So he's uh, probably very young at the time, probably fourteen to fifteen years old. Uh, so he, he was he was born uh, probably fifteen years old before the, uh, uh, I think, before the Hijrah. So he's probably around fifteen years old. So he came to that. So again, this is part of the blessing uh, to be the first group of people from Medina who embrace Islam. Who actually make a pledge with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? One of the pledges that I'm, um, I'm of you and you are of me, 
and then I will war against them, uh, war against you, and be at peace with those who are at peace with you. So this is the, the people of Medina at the time, uh, people of Yathrib. They come and they, they are ready to take our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and all the other companions to, uh, to take them to Medina. And as long as they can be the, um, um, the, uh, the, the leader among the, uh, the two um, warring tribes between uh, in Yathrib, which is the Aws and Khajrats. So that's why the the whole story. So he's he's one of the blessing of uh, of uh, Abdullah bin um, uh, Abdullah uh, Jabir bin Abdullah and uh, Abdullah bin Amr. It's one of the blessing to be the first one that make this treaty, makes this pledge, and the uh, the uh, to support Rasulullah Sallallahu So this father, uh, father the Abdullah bin Amr, he participated in the Battle of Badr. And then in the Battle of Uhud, he died as a Sahid, right? So when he participated in the Battle of Uhud, and he deliberately asked Jabir, so please do not join, the, because Jabir is already at the age. If you remember, the certain age for, for you to be able to join uh, the battle. And the, I think the I think some 14 or 15, I think it's 15, 14. Of course, Jabir bin Allah already passed that uh, age, but he was pre prevented. Uh, by his own father, because his father said that I had uh, premonition, I had um, intuition, or I had some things like a firasa in, in Arabic. And we use that in Indonesian as well, that kufirasa, which is the. Uh, he said that um, I have premonition that I would die in this battle, and then I have nine daughters, which is the sisters of Jabir, and I want you to look after them. And not only that, uh, this is again, this is, is a very very interesting. Uh, not only that, I have also some debt that uh, when I pass away, please help me to clear all my debts, right? And then he died in this battle as he had that premonitions before. I remember Umar bin Khattab Radiallahu mentioned, uh, be careful about the premoni uh, premonitions or insinuations of the believer. Alhamdulillah, we have, uh, <laughs> we have attendance. <laughs> Finally, I'm, I'm talking to someone. <laughs> I was talking to three cameras uh, today. <laughs> So where were we? Oh yes, oh, we, I was talking about the father of Jabir, Jabir bin Abdullah, by the name of Abdullah bin Amr, you can see the, the name. And he passed away in Hood. And this is one of the very interesting uh, story that because uh, there are so many, uh, there are how many people about, uh, there are 85, 85 people actually, the companions, the Sahaba, passed away in the battle of, uh, become Sahada. Uh, the Battle of Uhud, right? But, and and uh, Jabir bin Abdullah was very sad because his father passed away. And Rasulullah uh, uh, told, well, can I tell you what happened to your father? And he said, yes, Rasulullah, what happened to my father? And then Rasulullah mentions, no one, right? Uh, your father now, no one has spoken directly to Allah except behind the veil. And as your father, there will be no veil, right? And Allah asked the father of Jabir bin Abdullah and asked, wish and I will grant you, right? And this is one of the huge blessings that 85 people of, uh, that passed away during, during that battle, none of the companions will get this sort of, what do you call that, blessing? This is, it is huge, right? The Allah, never before Allah talked behind the veil except for this father. So it must be... Uh, it must be this the iman, the faith, and the uh, um, the convictions of um, the father of Jabir, and then you know when when the when the martyr when the sahir is asked by Allah, what do you want? Do you know what the answer? Do you know? To die again. Yes, bring me back to this world, so I will die again for you, right? Yes. And that is actually his father actually answering that, right? So one also that is the. Uh, uh, amazing, amazing hadith about how he huge blessing for the father of Jabir bin Abdullah, which is Abdullah bin Amr. And then, and again, this is if you talk about Mubasara, uh, the Jannah, or people who get the glad tiding of Jannah, there's different categories. This category is people get the blessing of Jannah after they pass away. And this is the, the, the father of Jabir. And also, um, one, one another example that come to my mind is. Um, Jabir, no, no, Jabir, the uh, Jafar, Jafar bin Abu Talib, right? He passed away the, at the Battle of Mu'tah. And then after he passed away, Rasulullah mentioned that 
uh, he got his hand got chopped off because he's the one who would uh, uh, carrying the flag or something and the enemy came and got the two hands got chopped off and Rasulullah mentioned that Allah replaced his two hands with wings and he flies over a uh, place uh, like a bird of Jannah or something like that right so and again this is part of uh, the good news of people entering Jannah after they pass away so one of them is the father of Jabir bin Abdullah and if you think about this right uh, this is a huge huge blessing right uh, is uh, that uh, if you like Rasulullah came to you and said your father is in, already in Jannah you see how how can you you be sad because sad is not because sad is sad because you be your father uh, leave you behind but but you'll be happy right away because knowing the fate of your father. So that is the, the good news. And Rasulullah mentioned that Allah spoke directly to your father. Uh, I quoted uh, a Quran. Uh, I forgot why. Oh, yes. Uh, this is Wala tahsabanna lazina qutilu fi sabilillah amwat. Never think those martyr in the cause of Allah. Kutilu fi sabillah. Kutilu means kill or kill fi sabillah in the path of Allah, which is the the matter. Uh, Amwat. They're not dead, right? Don't don't think that they're dead. Bal ahyau in the Rabbihim yur uh, yur zakun. Then they are alive. So Allah actually mentioned not also this. I think there's uh, one in wa taqulul lima yukatalu fi sabillillahi amwat bal ahyau. This is also in uh, I think that is in al bak. Uh, Al Baqarah, he mentions, uh, I think at least two references in in the Quran, when Allah mentioned, never, never call them dead, right? So that means they have a different status, where they actually Allah look after them and and so on. So so this is, the matter is not dead, and then uh, the famous uh, verse about this matter and this actually came down for, uh, for the father of Jabir. Now think about it, right? So Jabir when he's probably praying behind Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said this uh, Ali Imran and then what come to mind oh, my father because of this is being revealed so this is the Abdullah Ibn Amr Ibn Haram Al-Ansari um, yeah as much as he, he died in uh, Uhud and then when he was ready to get buried his sister came in and cried and Rasulullah come, uh, come her down by says Malaika never be, Malaika came down and cover his his wings, right? So the your processions, your funeral procession, is not only attended by uh, by human, but also attended by the angels. And there are so many martyrs, about eighty five. Uh, you remember um, one of one of the the famous martyr in the Battle of Uhud. Musab, sorry. Musab, Musab yes, Musab. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> the other one, the, the, the Musab probably the second one, the first one, the uncle. The uncle yes, yeah. One of the blessing of Uncle um, Hamza uh, bin Abdul Muttalib was that when every single uh, martyr, every single Sahid, was they they prayed Janazah upon them and also so put uh, um, uh, Hamza, and then another. Put Hamza again, so Hamza is like most like eighty plus times, right? So this is a blessing for Hamza, uh, radhiyallahu anhu, and then this is the the blessing of and the all the martyrs, the one that is actually has has an angel doing the procession is is this uh, huge blessing for Abdullah bin Amr. Right, so uh, yes, so let's talk about the the person today, the Sahaba, the Hadith narrator Jabir bin Abdullah radhiyallahu anhu. So he's born, um, he's about 36 younger than Rasulullah Sallallahu So he's born in uh, 15 before Hijrah. And then he, uh, he, actually, he actually mentioned that he participated in all the battles. There's about 21 all battles. There are two, there are two types of battle. Battle is called Gazawa, uh, bat battles that is Rasulullah present. This is included in that. There's also battle that the Sahaba perform, uh, Sahaba involved. But uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was not involved. So that's called, uh, put a note in that, it's called Saraya, right? So Ghazawat is about 21. And also, and then Jabir bin Rami says, I participated in all the battle except the two, which is the uh, the uh, Badr and Uhud. And because what happened was, he was, uh, before you came in, I mean, but his, his father actually asked him not to join the battle, right? And uh, to show that is, uh, to show that the obedience to father it's more sacred than jihad with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? So imagine that. 
right? Even if you remember the Battle of Badar, um, Uthman bin Affan was supposed to join when he get ready to join Rasulullah and then your wife will seek look after your wife, right? So is so, so people can actually drive line as well that that looking after your sick wife or your sick family member is more sacred than jihad with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that is the and now after the battle of Hud he passed away, then he uh, then he joined the battle with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All right, so what I am going to talk about next, right? So there is one particular hadith. Uh, I actually love this hadith. I call it the hadith J J hadith. I have two J hadiths. Right? One of the hadiths of Jibril. You know this one, right? When Ros- uh, when Jibril came and asked, "What is Islam? What is Iman? And what is Ihsan?" Right? And then, "What is the sign of the hereafter?" Right? So the hadith uh, Jibril, right? Hadith J J hadith. But there's also a very popular one as well. It's called Hadith of Jabir, right? Um, it is very interesting. And then today's we will only talk about this hadith because this hadith presents in almost every book of uh, every book of hadith. Uh, not only that, people actually a lot of things that people derive from this hadith, and uh, there's so many booklets and books and treatises and whatnot actually extracted from this story, right? Just quickly, what happened was, right, there was, I think, 10 months after the Battle of Uhud, there was one particular um, military expedition. And, um, and let me tell this one. Right. There's actually two branches of this story. So I, I really like this story. So one of them, one of, one of the stories is about marriage, right? And then I, are you gonna li- you're going to like this. Oh, I, everyone's going to like this. And if I normally give, so I get so excited right away. So if I if I uh, normally give a class about about marriage about husband and wife and that, uh, I usually quote this and tell the stories about this because just amazing. And not only that, it uh, what is how to say that is just amazing that uh, that Quran is so complete, right? It covers everything, right? It covers even the most sort of sensitive and delicate topic, right? Between intimacy and intimate relationship between husband and wife, and that in the hadith of Jabir. All right, All right. so the so enough to get you <laughs> excited. <laughs> right, the hadith is as I mentioned is is uh, quoted in in almost every books of a uh, hadith, and then of course with the different uh, where's where's my mask? Oh, sorry. Uh, of course with the with the different uh, text and wording. So is uh, the one uh, this was on uh, Sahih Bukhari. So what happened was at the time what Jabir bin Abdullah was, uh, they just finished the expedition, the military expedition, right? So they on the way to Medina, and I, I divide into two. I call this the camel right? hadith of Jabir, the camel part one. So Rasulullah uh, Sallam, he he as as a leader, right, he uh, always like to know what happened to his uh, his ummah, right? So he's always checking on everyone. So what happened is Jabir was riding this old camel, right? Not only old and slow and and then and Rasulullah uh, Sallam actually, he was actually very left behind, like really left behind to the army and Rasulullah actually came, uh, he was riding on a camel and Rasulullah uh, asked him, uh, how are you doing? What's the matter with you, right? And Rasulullah Sallam uh, asked that, and then of course uh, he didn't expect that Rasulullah would come from all the way. The he's the leader of the army; he should be right on the the the, the first line, right? So he came down and uh, riding his camel and asked, and and Jabir says, "Well, this useless camel, right? And that's why I got so be, behind, right? And okay, well, why don't you just uh, uh, make your camel sit, right?" Make a camel sit and Rasulullah also sit as well, and then also like use the the stick just to you know the stick sometimes used to uh, to communicate. So it's not it's not torture, it's not it's not to harm the camel, but that this is how you communicate to the camel if you want the camel to walk faster and what. So just put it. So Rasulullah did that to the camel, and suddenly the camel just woke up and part of the one of the miracle of Rasulullah and. 
and then the camel just walk up and then just you know like galloping and running like that right and then he couldn't control it right so suddenly uh, this is the mukjizat i think uh, uh, we don't have cars here right back in indonesia if i have car right so once a month or once every two months you go to your car and bring to the garage and get the car tuned up right and then they they clean the the spark plugs they uh, change the oil and everything they, they get the tuned up and you can feel it right you go to the toll road right away and uh, step on the gas and then you feel that and this is probably what rasulullah just did right it's just and the camel just ran away and then and rasulullah takes some time to actually keep up uh, uh, with uh, jabir and then so he now he feel like okay his problem gone right so this is one of the problem gone and rasulullah says uh, all right yeah uh, jabir now that you have a good camel now, right? Uh, sell me your camel, right? And then, um, beat me, beat me, uh, sell me your camel. Uh, then he's embarrassed, right? There is a prophet, Muhammad Sasa. And w- what is so interesting about the hadith is, it's so human, right? So human communication, right? And then, Rasulullah asks, sell me your camel, right? I want to buy your camel. And he got embarrassed and said, nah, Ya Rasulullah, I give it for you, right? I, I, I give this camel to you. No, 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 right? Um, the Sallam says, no, no, no. May Allah forgive you. I want to buy it, right? Uh, 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 I want to buy it, right? No, no, Rasulullah, I'll give it to you. May Allah forgive you. I want to buy it. Uh, and then he keep doing that. You know what? After 25 times, and Rasulullah insisted of buying this camel, and I know Rasulullah, I'll give it for you for free, Rasulullah. No, 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 Ghafarullah, all right? May Allah forgive you. And when he said that, it's a dua. So that's why he actually came to Rasulullah, make dua for me, to Allah forgive me 25 times. And then because Rasulullah keep insisting, right? One, one of the things is in Salah, we, um, we meet Rasulullah, we, we meet uh, the, these two great individuals in, in Jannah, inshallah. I want to see the video of this. I want to see the, the look on Jabir. It says, inshallah, I'll give it to you. No, no, no. Sell it to me. <laughs> no, no, no. 25 times. 25 times Allah, Ras- Rasulullah SAW asked forgiveness to, to Jabir. No, no, I'm going to... And then finally, uh, finally, okay, Rasulullah insisted. Okay, then, all right. All right, I agree. Okay, uh, let me let me let me sell it to you, and then how much the price? Okay, let me buy one dirham, Rasulullah <laughs> Sallam, and and uh, uh, Jabi say a minute ago, <laughs> he said I'll give it to you, but now it's a different translation. He want to sell, right? Rasulullah asked for one dirham, uh, one dirham is probably the lowest amount, probably like what, then five Hong Kong dollar or something for a price of a camel, right? And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one dirham. No, I cannot be like that, right? That's a loss. I can sell it for one, dollar, one dirham. Okay, how about two dirham? Ya Rasulullah, this is, come on, seriously, right? Two dirham. Okay, three dirham, all right? And then keep doing this, right? So there was, there was the argument to, uh, to sell it and then he rejected it. No, I'll give it to you. Now, uh, Jabir agreed to sell. And Rasulullah asked for the lowest price as well. Around one dirham, two dirham. Until back and forth, back and forth. Until they finally agree. Okay, whatever the unit at that time was uh, one yeah, of gold. Like whatever the, um, uh, the price is enough for a camel, right? Uh, and then, okay, they agreed to that. It's one uqiyah of gold. Uh, but one condition Jabi says yes okay okay it's deal deal right and Rasulullah mentions are you okay with the price now right yes I'm okay with the price so you agree with the price right so this is part of the making sure that transactions yes okay but Rasulullah one condition what is that let me use this uh, let me use this camel until I reach to Medina all right okay no problem so they walk right so this is where actually the second part of the hadith come but i'm just going to focus on this one so they arrive in medina uh, and then <coughs> jabir came home and he met his uncle as a uh, and then he told the stories right i have this camel i sold it so what you the, the only camel you have come on what what kind of right 
but again uh, this is this is the transactions you 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 had to as well it should be you, you should know this is a blessing right but of course the the name of the uncle is actually uh, not mentioned but anyway when he uh, came to his wife and his wife has probably uh, more iman and faith uh, and he says okay then go and give the camel back to Rasulullah, right so you already got this all right so uh, next morning he came uh, to the uh, the house of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then he tied the camel and then what says the camel oh that's right giving you the camel the one that we agree all right and Rasulullah asked bilal and this is again this is very uh, interesting because the this is the uh, the what do you call that the sunnah of Rasulullah. every time Rasulullah promised to pay something or to buy something he always made something so instead of probably if you owe someone one hundred dollar, he will probably give one hundred dollar and five dollar, right? So this is not riba. This is something that, not only that, if you promise it was one ukiah of gold for the price of the camel, he actually put some some more money to that, right? And that says Rasulullah asked, okay, Bilal, uh, pay pay the money and then just give some more uh, uh, money to it. And then after after that and and Jabir ready to go. And what did Rasulullah say? Hey, come on, come on, come here. Oh, son of my brother, right? And do you think really I want to want this camel, right? To take the camel and take the money, right? So, subhanAllah, this is really, really... Uh, Rasulullah did not actually want uh, to buy the, the camel. He just want to give something, right? You know, because he's a father. Uh, he mentioned that why you were sad because my father passed away. I have nine sisters to look after, and my father actually put me a debt. Uh, my father passed away with a huge, uh, with uh, some debt uh, because of that. That's why I'm sad right now. And then the only thing I have is just this lousy and useless camel. So this Rasulullah I'm trying to help, and then so many things you can derive from here, right? And then what happened is the Jabi says that this money is actually the source of barakah, and I, when they I uh, use this money to do this uh, to do this trading and but or and whatnot and then they always have this money at the end so this is part of the uh, uh, and yes and this is um, uh, what is sort of lessons that derive from here right this is showing us the humanity side of Rasulullah right people people after the the battle. Uh, and then probably probably not care probably people are so excited to go home they're tired and so on right Rasulullah actually came and, and talked to Jabir Jabir is still young at the time he was very left behind as well and this is one of the things that we can we can hear this is the the human side of Rasulullah so how Rasulullah is actually and um, you know you know the stories about Rasulullah when uh, when he is close to someone even he's uh, you know when someone has enemy right when you try when you find your enemy you're always gonna say oh this guy is horrible and disgrace and so on so many people when they when they are uh, when they treat rasul as an enemy and then they actually meet each other they become person who actually love rasul so there's a story about uh amar bin as you, you know story that amar bin as you know his story is that he's the last person who embraced islam Almost before the the uh, at the Fatuh Makkah, before the Makkah is actually taken over, so he's the last one. This him and Khalid bin Walid, so he's the last person to embrace Islam, and there was a lot of a lot of uh, companions who's been with Rasulullah SAW for the last uh, thirteen years, plus five years, eighteen years, almost twenty years, and this person is just the last person, Amr bin As, and then he when we become Muslim and they start getting interactions with Rasulullah, he th- he thought. That Rasulullah love him the most, <laughs> right? So this is the one their number one enemy. Before before we can Muslim, I hate Prophet Muhammad. It really hate him so much. And after we, can, this is this is really the excellence of characters, right? And and this is what is being shown here uh, by Rasulullah talking to Jabir. And then of course the miracle of the camel. The the camel got chewed up. Uh, think about from camel or from camel perspective so think about from jabir perspective right he experienced the humbleness the humility of rasulullah the the caring of rasulullah and he witnessed a miracle as well right mm. uh, so that's how the iman grows so he witnessed this miracle he witnesses how his camel uh, lousies and useless and suddenly just <laughs> just spitting up like that right 
Uh, another thing that people derive from here is that it's actually permissible for you to request uh, not, uh, what I call reasonable request. For example, do we have a transaction? Okay, you buy my laptop for 50,000 Hong Kong dollar, for example, and it says, okay, as long as I can use it until my uh, last uh, exam, probably next month, right? So it is allowed to do that, right? So this is to request us. And also, very interesting, it is permissible to decline the request of Rasul <laughs> right? And th in this case, Rasulullah as a prophet and Rasulullah as a human being interaction, right? Sell me this camel. No, Rasulullah, I'll give it to you. Sell me this camel 25 times. You can... Uh, and again, what, what does it show? And the, the companions understand this, right? Um, there was a story where there was a, a, a two slaves, which is husband and wife. And the, the, the slave lady was, uh, was freed and she became a free uh, woman. And when she became a free woman, part of the Sharia, uh, she can choose to uh, divorce her husband. So, so she divorced it, right? And the husband was crying and crying, uh, please come back to me, and, 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 and so on. And Rasulullah saw, uh, saw that, and as I look at this, uh, the, the crazy love of this person, right? And then Rasulullah, please help me, I'm still in love with my wife, uh, please talk to my wife, and Rasulullah, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her name? Barira. Uh, yeah, and also asked, yeah, Barira, come on, have mercy, right? He, you, you ex-husband and one answer. And then, why don't you marry him? Right? Why don't you marry him again? And you know what Barira asked? Ya Rasulullah, is it uh, an order? Right? Is it, is it a uh, takmuruni, Ya Rasulullah? Is, is it an order? Or, no, no, I'm just making safa. I'm just making here. If, that's the case, right? Then I have no need of this man. <laughs> so this, and again, uh, of course, this declining of request of Rasulullah will not happen to us, right? <laughs> because we know what sunnah, what 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 is wajib, what is far, and what is uh, um, uh, haram, and so everything is already is already well. But at the time, the interaction they know, it, right? Is it the order of you of Rasulullah, or this is just a the suggestion, right? So you as a prophet or you as a uh, as a human uh, interaction. Uh, another thing, uh, lessons derived is no one in the history of Sirah experience that Rasulullah make dua that Allah forgive that person 25 times in a short amount of time. No one, right? And see, this is the blessing. Think about it, right? The, you remember Abu Huraira where Rasulullah put uh, the hand on his chest and may Allah will never make you forget any hadith, right? So that is a blessing. That's why Abu Huraira became Abu Huraira. He memorized about 5,000 something hadith, right? And this, uh, and again, this is one of the blessings, right? Then he, uh, Rasulullah uh, says, uh, uh, may Allah forgive you, may Allah forgive you 25 times, right? And another thing is, what is another thing, right? What is another thing that Jabir experienced? The sense of humor of Rasulullah Sallallahu right? <laughs> Seriously, right? After insisting of buying, right? <laughs> and then say, how much you wanna, how much you wanna buy? Uh, one one dirham. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, I wanna watch this. Uh, if you if you if you love, uh, what do you call that? <clears throat> Comedy, right? This is really comedical. I don't know whether comedical is a word, a comical or something, <laughs> whether it's the right word. Right? And uh, so amazing. In just one sitting, Jabir bin Abdullah experienced like a lifetime. Right? He, he witnessed a miracle. He witnessed how to deal with the transition. He witnessed the, the caring of Rasulullah. He witnessed the sense of humor of Rasulullah. SubhanAllah. It's just, just amazing. So, and... And then one of the things as well is you have I, I think I think this is part of the Sharia as well. Every time you transactions, you still uh, I don't know whether currently if you already switch the money and the goods right and then that's it. This is done. Uh, in Islam, is actually you can actually confirm that again right. And but nowadays people don't use that. Probably use receipt. Once you put the receipt, then yeah. But this is part of the part of the Sharia to make sure that you can uh, confirm that. You okay with the price, right? So making sure that what Rasulullah some asked, you okay with the one okay, right? Uh, 
right? And again, it's a teaching, right? <clears throat> and then it is permissible to have the conditions uh, for the sales uh, contract. All right. That is part one of the hadith of Jabir, which is the camel. The other part, which is the marriage, right? The same hadith, actually. The same hadith is a one hadith narrated on the first person because Jabir narrated himself. So remember, the, the, the camel has been turned up, right? So he start riding the camel in front, right? And it says, what's this? What's in a hurry? Rasulullah asks. Ya Rasulullah, I'm nearly married. <clears throat> like, it, it is common that people, when they get newly married, right, if they work in the office from 9 to 6, exactly 6 o'clock, they were just gone, right? Newly married, right? What do you expect, right? Ya Rasulullah, I'm newly married. And Rasulullah asks, Oh, you're newly married? To an old lady or to a young lady? <laughs> you heard this before, right? <laughs> and Ya Rasulullah, I married, uh, uh, or in other words, it's also a widow, right? So, uh, Ya Rasulullah, I married a widow. And asked, Rasulullah asked, why don't you marry the young one, right? Why don't you just uh, marry a younger one, someone your age or someone younger, right? So that means you can play with her and she can play with you. You can laugh with her and she can laugh with you. This is this is quite amazing, right? Um, uh, the 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 selections of what the Rasulullah says you can play with the in even in other narrations is more uh, in other narrations of this is quite uh, quite explicit some of the words that Rasulullah mentions, right? Uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll we'll discuss that later on. And Ya Rasulullah, my father passed away, and then he left me with nine sisters and. And not only that, I have a lot of things I need to look after. If I married someone young, I'm just adding to become 10. <laughs> right? Uh, and because of that, right, I I married someone who's old. Right? Someone who's actually uh, will help me looking after my... All right, that's good. Good idea. Also, so so uh, this, this is the the reason I married someone older. So that means I can share the, the load of looking after nine girls. So that is the, uh, this is, Alhamdulillah, this is the uh, correct uh, direction. And Rasulullah SAW, O oh, Jabir, right? Slow down, right? And please enter at night. So what does it mean? It means it is a part of the uh, the habit, part of the, the Sunnah of Rasulullah SAW. Every time they're coming back from the expedition, just about a few hours away from the city of Medina, Rasulullah will send someone, they call it the crier, right, to uh, run faster to the Medina and tell Rasulullah who is coming in probably three hours, four hours, get ready. So, you know, what's the purpose of that? It is to let everyone know, to get everyone prepared. So, they probably some here again whether they win the victory, uh, the, they got the victory or not, right? So, then people know. So, it's like a crier. But it also uh, alert and tell the wives. Because they've been away for a few months with their husband, right? So then to, to let the wives prepare. Right? So, and again, this is amazing. Our religion is actually amazing. We, we come down to that. Uh, so, for some reason, so your wife can comb the hair and shave the private parts, right? So, it's even mentioned to that, right? So, do not rush to go home. Let the crier tell them first. So then your wife will be able to comb their hair, basically tidy up, look pretty, look nice, right? And this is this is one of the sunnah I, I, I've been practicing for some time. So every time I go home from office, I will, I will, I, I will call my wife. I'm going home, I'll be home in 30 minutes, inshallah, <laughs> right? Make yourself smell good. <laughs> <laughs> Not the smell of a curry, all right. Anyway, <laughs> right? And, and Subhanallah, how this thing is? It looks simple, right? it, it, it looks simple, but this comes from the blessed mouth of Rasulullah It is actually an amazing, amazing. Uh, um, people will go to psychologies and stuff. This is just so, so simple. 
to put your wife excited to wait for your husband, for their husband to come and, and dress up, right? Or comb their hair and shave, whatever they need to prepare to, to make them look, right? And not only that, Rasulullah SAW, and when you go home, go home at night, right? So that means at night is more relaxed and you can meet your, with your, because you're newly married. Not only that, when you Jabir, when you enter upon her, be wise and gentle, right? Subhanallah is uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. What is the lessons derived here, right? And first of all, first of all, this strikes so many people, right? The words and the advice of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam talking about Rasulullah will never shy away uh, with delicate topic like this, right? And we sometimes was stuff. We don't talk about like that, right? So many uh, Muslim family when their children got married. So for me, for example, those was last times. Uh, <clears throat> one of my uh, the son of one of my cousin got married right? and before they got married and stuff after the wedding ceremony and so on and stuff and I jokingly asked my cousin have you told your son told, told what have you told your son how to make dua and this and that no <laughs> we don't talk stuff like that <laughs> right what you more noble than Rasulullah Sallallahu <laughs> Rasulullah is actually, he knew that the father of Jabir already passed away, right? So probably this is actually he played the role of being a father. So you know, talking about stuff like this. So Rasulullah is not shy away with the delicate topics like this. And I'm just just think about it, Lisa, right? Right. This I want I want I want to to start thinking about this as well. You know. This part, like human uh, husband and wife intimacy, right? It is something that is actually there's a hadith about that. There's a hadith about Rasulullah SAW, how he interact in the bed and so on. There, there is and what's after that, how to wash and so on. There is a, it's up to that detail, right? You know, some other narrations, not narrations, some other religion, some other thing, right? They don't want to talk about it. Not only that, they even think this act. Is not holy. Right? So that's why the holy men of that religion, whatever you call that religion, there's celibacy to that. They don't touch women. Right? They don't do this. Why? Because for you to be holy, to get close to Allah, or to close to whatever they, 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 they want to worship, is stay away from this. This is not our religion. Right? Even yeah, the, uh, the, in Christianity, for example, you found uh, some sort of celibacy, right? So they don't get married and stuff like that. And also in Hindu as well, the priests. And there's almost other religion. They always shy away uh, from getting married because they think doing that act, right, intimacy and sexual act and whatnot, is not holy. This is what makes us different. right? Rasulullah SAW, not only he also give advice uh, around that, because you know what? Who put that need? Uh, who put that need for us to drink? Who put that need for us to eat? Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that because it's part of our need. Right? When Allah put the need for us to drink, there's a water that Allah provides. When Allah put the need for us to eat, there's food that Allah to uh, that Allah provides. And the same thing that Allah put the need for human being to have relationship, to have intimacy and so on and Allah provide the means to do that as well the same thing and if you do it the way Allah wants it that become part of ibadah the part of the uh, worshipping Allah so this is uh, this is how uh, separate this religion with other religion right well, I, could, I, would, I would probably say the man made religion but anyway this is probably not area for that anyway what is playful and love, la uh, laughter that indicates romance and fun together in, 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 in a way, in, in the bedroom sort of situations, right? So you can play with your wife, your wife can play with you. It's fun, right? There's something that uh, indicate romance, indicate together, like a, a probably more or less than what indicate romance and sexuals and so on, right? Be, that's what, and again, that is the goal of the marriage, right? As I mentioned to you, uh, Allah used that marriage as for you to fulfill your need for one another, satisfaction from one another. That's the same thing Allah put the, the, the chicken and everything for your satisfaction, for your hunger, right? Uh, for, for us, just to fulfill the need, biological need for us to eat, right? 
Allah, if Allah allow, uh, if Allah uh, wants, Allah can remove the taste of the chicken from us. We just eat, right? No, it's not. Uh, the, you can have different way of putting the chicken. You can enjoy the same time you need that energy, but at the same time Allah make that fruitful and beautiful to eat. The same thing. This is uh, what you call the procreation for a human being to continue, right? There is a need for human to procreate and uh, there's a need for for, uh, for human being to have children and, and descendants and one another. There's a need. But in order to fulfill that, there's a satisfaction in that as well. right? And that is what's so beautiful about this. Uh, and of course, the primary goal of each party can find satisfaction between one to another. right? The intimacy which is, is indicated but the good thing is, it is indicated. The, the the awesome thing about this is indicated, but not direct, but not vulgar at all. all right. So this is the. Uh, what else the lessons uh, derive? Uh, wise and gentle. All right. Uh, wise. The word was is kayes. Imam Bukhari mentioned. Uh, Ibn Khuzaimah also uh, mentioned that this actually refers to intimacy or sexual act. All right. Uh, and like a caring, right, to make sure that you fulfill your wife need as well, All right. So uh, that really is a huge, amazing, and be gentle. There's not to hurry, right? What does it mean not to hurry, right? There's a foreplay to that, or something that you can enjoy in front of it. I don't know whether this class is, <laughs> but uh, well, we have to tell this, right? And and I'm I'm, I'm not shy to say this, and uh, and if Rasulullah is not shy not shy to share this and why we have to be shy. We, we're not more noble than Rasulullah right? And this is one of the things and, and we should be, uh, it doesn't mean you have to be vulgar and and, 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 and uh, or R-rated or anything, but it's something that you can mention it uh, in, a, in a words. and So so inform before coming your home, right? So that again, to, to so you make I prepare, right? So they can put their nice clothes, the nice whatever, right? And then one of the things Allah mentions is that encouragement to marry someone uh, not the same age but younger, right? This is again encouragement. It's not, it's not a, it's not a sunnah per se. It's not like a wajib, but this is something that uh, because then uh, uh, this is probably more psychology, right? That you better have someone with the same sort of way of thinking from the age point of view, from the uh, from the age point of view as well as from the uh, from the locality point of view, right? So this is something. Even though Rasulullah did not do himself on his first marriage, he not he didn't marry someone who's uh, the same age. But this is an advice to uh, commonly uh, advice to other people to have about the same age, right? All right. <clears throat> so just the last one before this probably last story about Jabir bin Abdullah. Uh, Jabir uh, had a loan, uh, perhaps it was uh, passed down from his father. So the 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 guy who uh, the creditor the the one who yeah, he got the loan from and he came down and asked and he forced uh, Jabir Jabir it's time for you to pay the money right now if you're not paying I'll report it to Rasulullah he's actually uh, one from uh, from from the Jewish tribe that uh, in Medina so he said I'll talk to I'll talk to your prophet uh, yeah Abel Qasam they they don't call Prophet Muhammad they call Abel Qasam which is the nickname the kunya of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abel Qasam look at this this guy owe me money, he didn't return it, and Rasulullah said, can you return it? No, I don't have anything, and Rasulullah, uh, we, the crops, uh, what I call the crops, did not harvest today, we don't harvest uh, this, this year's around, and Rasulullah uh, then went to uh, the field, and Rasulullah made dua, and the debts grew and grew and grew, uh, until Jabir bin Abdullah, see again, another miracle uh, that Jabir witnessed, uh, and again, this probably because, his father was a martyr, was a Sahid, and then this is probably Allah we uh, uh, put the honor the father of Jabir, and from this then they they he managed to pay all the debt and everything from the dates here. Uh, <coughs> Jabir bin Abdullah is um, is uh, the first one who did the halakah in the Prophet of uh, Masjid Nabawi, the Prophet of uh, Rasulullah, uh, the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's the first one who made this halakah. And he passed away uh, in the age of 94. Um, I found it, uh, I tried to find where he actually passed away. And I found it near somewhere, uh, the city of Madian, somewhere near Baghdad. So he was buried there. So that is the uh, the story of our uh, the hadith collector. 
today so the this is the last page um, about so what is the legacy of Jabir right I have no doubt I've just known the answer right away the legacy of Jabir is the Hadith Jabir <laughs> right and what does it do it is so as the humanity of Rasulullah in and in, in this is what an experience uh, of Jabir uh, to experience this closeness with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he he saw the wit he witnessed the um, the miracle, he saw his understandings about how to deal with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, how the caring of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and so on and so forth. It's just amazing, and and understanding about the intimacy as well from uh, between husband and wife, and the and it is coming from directly from the blessed mouth from uh, for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He uh, given an advice, why don't you, you know, make sure you, you go to wife with gentle and wise, you cannot get more explicit to that, right? So, again, this is the uh, Hadith Jabir. So, anytime people say Jabir, do not know for me, it's always the Hadith Jabir, right? So, the J Hadith. All right, <clears throat> so if you compare that to Hadith of Jibril, so Hadith of Jibril is about Akidah, right? It's about you believe. Is about understanding Allah, understanding Iman, right? How, how to get close to Allah. So it's really about the Akidah, right? The the, the faith, right? The uh, the creed of this religion. The Hadith of Jabir is about human interaction, right? It's about human uh, and uh, how to deal with uh, how to do interactions, how to do trading, how to do sales, and and the, the including the sense of humor of Rasulullah Sallallahu and everything. So it's really the J hadith, right? the double J hadith. So it's, I never heard someone talk about it. This is the first time that, because I really love this double J hadith. <laughs> All right. Um, I found uh, just one snippet, quick stories of uh, Jabir bin Abdullah where he traveled one month uh, just looking for a hadith. And and then he would just travel. He know there's one hadith, but he just want to make sure he travel to one of the companions in one month, and then knock on the door, sir. And someone came and says, "Uh, uh, who are you? I'm look. I can't. Uh, I forgot to put the name of the companion. Says I'm meeting this companion. Okay, who are you? I'm tell him I'm Jabir. And then the guy, Jabir. I don't know any Jabir. Hold on, is it Jabir? The Jabir bin Abdullah. All right." So he met up and then uh, before I die or before you die, I want to make sure that I collect the hadith from you. And he collected the hadith and then come back again another one once or two months, right? And then look at where we are. We just can sunnah.com and then Google it and hadith.co.uk or whatever. And then in just one second, everything. at the. So that's why they probably have five, six, seven, ten hadith, right? But the hadith is with their life. Not only hadith for them is not like a Sahih Bukhari number two five five is not that right. This is us right. For them hadith is is really their life. It's the story of their life right. It is that's why they're different. That's why they become the best generation because hadith for them is not Bukhari number one two three right. For hadith for them is their life. They live this hadith right. They was there when Rasulullah mentioned it right. So that's why uh, they become to what they become because uh, they're very close to the source of the knowledge and the most noble men who ever walk on this earth. So that is a story about our uh, uh, hadith narrator, which is Jabir. We need to talk to Brother Mufit to switch off the video. <laughs> to, to finish, so is there any question? <laughs> any question? If not, we can close. Okay? All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, attending, for listening to this. Hopefully, this is... Uh, and again, we talk about the celebrity of Jannah. So, hopefully, we can derive a lot of things uh, from here. I actually, one of the uh, the best stories that I like is the story of the Hadith of Jabir. So... Alright, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.